Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Hello dear students, I hope you are doing well Welcome to another video from our Inspire Chemistry series on our channel Easy Chemistry for All This is Mr. Mu'ar and inshallah before we start Please uh, try to share and subscribe to the channel if you hadn't done so uh, Share the channel in uh, with your friends uh, in the groups so that hopefully many students can benefit from this video inshallah or these videos inshallah okay so we are continuing our inspire chemistry series and now we are starting in module 5 lesson 1 development of the modern periodic table okay of course you know about the periodic table we are going to uh, learn the following or after this uh, video you should be able to trace the development of the periodic table and the contributions of different scientists so we are going to see how the periodic table evolved from being something very very basic to the uh, newer or the newest structure that we have today and we will learn about some of the names of people who actually developed it and we will study the periodic table in terms of identifying the key features groups uh, rows elements and so on okay so it's going to be a very light video a very short video uh, okay so how are elements organized in the periodic table this is the main question so you know the periodic table. كيف رتبنا العناصر فيهم؟ كيف العناصر مترتبة على أساس شو؟ Based on what? These are the different keywords in this uh, section or in this video. Don't worry, we are going to see these uh, keywords uh, while we are going. Okay? So of course you know that the atomic number is the number of protons in an atom. Okay? The protons are normal positive particles in the nucleus. All right? So the first one of the first attempts to uh, create a table of elements was done by this scientist called Antoine uh, Lavoisier, probably in French. I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation or not, or Antoine uh, Lavoisier. Okay, he compiled the list of 33 elements known at the time. So this is his table, guys. So what he did, there were only 33 elements were known. Some of them didn't have names or proper names. Some of it, some of them had names. So he organized it into gases, metals, nonmetals, and earths, and these were the names of these elements. Okay, like simple substances. And there's some old English here. There are some things that we know, like cobalt, copper, tin, iron, lead, gold, silver. Okay, and so on. And some of the things were actually not. Uh, not elements, they were actually, uh, I, mean, I mean, they are elements, but they were, uh, they didn't have the proper names that we know today, okay? All right, so this was the scientist in 1700s, okay? After that, new elements were discovered, okay? And this, the next century, some scientists had a better knowledge of, of elements, okay? And this guy, who's called John Newland, proposed arranging elements by their atomic mass, by their masses, okay? And then he noticed that properties repeated after every eight elements. And this was the law of the octaves. So oct means eight, okay? So what does that mean? What he did was he would arrange uh, elements by their atomic mass, okay? So go H, L, I, G, B, O, and so on, go down, keep going down, and then when he finishes, he would go up. And then what would happen, or what he noticed, is that within the row, elements with similar properties are in the same row. Okay? So he'd go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And that's one octave. Okay? So every eight times, the properties are repeated. For example, you order based on the atomic mass. And then when you go start from here, this element here will have similar properties to this one. This one, similar to this one. This one, similar to this one. And so on. Okay. 
So this is how John Newlands organized his table based on the atomic mass and he was famous for the octaves rule, okay? Now after that what happened was another guy called Dmitry Mendeleev, okay? Dmitry Mendeleev made a table arranging the elements in order of atomic mass, okay? Same as Newlands, but he organized them into columns with similar properties, okay? So empty spaces in the table enabled him to predict the existence of undiscovered elements. So this is actually very smart, okay? So he organized elements into groups. This is group one, group two, group three. So groups, right? As you can see from up to... Group four, group five, group six, and so on, okay? So what he did here, for example, as you can see, he will start, for example, in group four. Uh, he will start with carbon, then Si, Ti, Zr. So all of these have the same properties. هاي العناصر كلها عندها نفس الخصائص مرتبة من فوق لتحت بناء على الازدياد في الاتوميك ماس. Okay, the atomic mass here is 12, here 28, and so on. Now, the smart thing is that from 140 to 180, he predicted that there is something here. There should be something here. There should be something here. Empty places. So, هاي الأماكن الفاضية هي هي عبارة عن أماكن العناصر لم تكتشف بعد. Okay. So this was very smart of him to 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 like he made this table and noticing this, it's actually a very smart thing because these elements were predicted later or uh, were 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 found in existence later. Okay. Now the final. Uh, the final in the final the final guy who uh, made a development on the periodic table as we know it today uh, his name was Henry Mosley okay he refined Mendeleev's table by arranging elements in the order of increasing of atomic number رتب العناصر بناء على ازدياد الاتوميك نمبر or the number of protons instead of the atomic mass so this resulted in a clear periodic pattern Okay, so the statement that there is a periodic repetition of chemical and physical properties يعني أن الخصائص الكيميائية والفيزيائية تتكرر بشكل دوري اللي هي جاية من كلمة الجدول الدوري of the elements when they are arranged so this happens, this repetition هذا التكرار في الخصائص الفيزيائية والكيميائية happens when we arrange elements by increasing their atomic number so this statement, it's called the periodic law so the periodic law means that periodic repetition of chemical and physical properties is observed when we arrange elements by their atomic number. So this is called the periodic law. So this guy is behind the periodic law. Okay. So this is uh, so this is the development of the periodic table. These are the contributions of the scientists. Okay, John Newlands. Mayer, Dmitry Mendeleev, and Henry Mosley. So, Lothar Mayer demonstrated a connection between atomic mass and elements properties, okay? So, the most important ones are Newlands, Mendeleev, and Henry Mosley, okay? You can also read this. This is also very important. This table is very important, okay? Because they bring some questions from it, okay? So, you need to know the contribution of each scientist. مش لازم نحفظ التواريخ. لازم نعرف كل عالم شو سوى شو دور. Okay. Now, the modern periodic table that we know today has elements organized in it, and it contains the name of the element, the symbol, the atomic number, and atomic mass. So oxygen. This is the element. هذا العنصر. This is the symbol. This is the atomic number. This is the atomic mass, which we'll study in grade in uh, in term two, inshallah. Okay. All right. So this is the modern periodic table that we know. So there are groups. Group one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, until you reach eighteen. Thamantashar amud. Wa kam saf mawjud? Wahed thnain, thalath, arba, khamsa, sitta, seven. These are the main elements, okay? And as you can see, there are different colors, okay? 
So if you if the element is in the blue color, it means it's a metal madam or filiz. If it's in green, it means it's metalloy. If it's in yellow, it means it's a non-metal. La filiz that. So metalloids are between metals and non-metals. They are something between. Okay. So columns are called groups or families. Okay. And rows are called periods. Sufuf to some periods. So the amida or the columns are groups. الصفوف عبارة عن periods or they are called periods and elements in group 1, 2, 13 to 18 are called representative elements okay so groups 1, 2 ومن 13 إلى 18 are called representative elements okay and the rest of the groups اللي هم elements from groups 3 to 12 okay are known as transition metals الفلزات الانتقالية who are they? From group 3 to group 12. كل العناصر اللي موجودة من group 3 إلى 12 they are called transition metals. All right. Now elements are classified as metals, non-metals, and metalloids. فلزات أو معادن لا فلزات وأشباه الفلزات. Okay. So metals are elements that are generally shiny. يعني تلمع. With smooth, clean, when smooth and clean, if it's clean, and it's solid at room temperature, صلبة في الحلال في درجة حرارة الغرفة, and they are good conductors of heat and electricity. وصلون الحرارة والكهرباء بطريقة جيدة. Okay, there are alkali metals are the elements of group one, except of hydrogen, and they are very reactive. So alkali metals are Elements of group one, ma adal hydrogen, so hydrogen is not an alkali metal. Okay, and they are very reactive, yani shadidat attafa'ul. So we need to know this, okay? Alkaline earth metals are in group two. So group two has the name of alkaline earth metals, and they're also highly reactive. Okay? Now, transition metals, which are from group three to twelve, are divided into or transition elements, sorry, are divided into transition metals and inner transition metals. So the two, let, let me show it to you here. Do you see group 3 to 12? So these are called, the ones in here, are called transition metals. لكن بتلاحظون you will notice that there is an arrow coming from here so there are other elements here guys okay these are called inner transition metals the lanthanide series اللي هم العناصر اللي موجودين اللي فوق الصف اللي فوق and the actinide or actinide series okay اللي هم الصف اللي تحت الحين إذا حطينا هذيلا في هذا ال... في هذا السهم راح توسع راح تصير عريضة البريديك تيبل فهم عشان ما يخلوها عريضة ويصغروها شوي they made an arrow okay and they put the rest of the elements here okay so these are called inner transition metals and these are called transition metals so the lanthanide series and the actinide series are located along at the bottom of the periodic table now, non-metals are elements that are generally gases and brittle. Non-metals, معظمهم يكون غازات. Okay, they are or sometimes dull-looking solids, and they are poor conductors of heat and electricity. ما يوصلون الحرارة والكهرباء نفس المتالز. Non-metals تعبانين شوي. Okay, now group 17 is composed of highly reactive elements. اللي يعني ناصر شديد التفاعل. و group 17 عندها اسم الهالوجينز. So it has the name of halogens, all right? Group 18 are extremely unreactive. يعني غازات خاملة لا So هاي غازات خاملة لا تتفاعل. They are extremely unreactive. So these gases are extremely, extremely unreactive. Okay? And they're called the noble gases, الغازات النبيلة. Okay? فالعناصر اللي موجودة في group 18 تسمى الغازات النبيلة اللي هم هذيلا. So it's in group 18. 
Okay, these are called noble gases. Might fail. All right. And finally, metalloids such as silicon or SI or germanium or germanium GE have physical and chemical properties of both metals and non-metals. So metalloids, these are in between metals and non-metals. Ma bain metals and non-metals. عندهم خصائص من هني ومن هني. Okay. Yeah. And that's it. That's it, guys. So let's go and solve some questions. Okay. You can stop the video before we solve these questions. Okay. So who first recognized that arranging elements according to the atomic number results in a clear periodic pattern? So when you see atomic number and arranging in atomic number, you should remember Henry Mosley, guys. Okay. So he was the one who uh, devised that. Which term refers to rows on the periodic table? Sufufil periodic table. Shun samia. We call it periods. Which term refers to the columns on the periodic table? This is very easy. We call it groups. Okay. And where are the representative elements found in the periodic table? We said that the representative elements are groups one and two, and thirteen and eighteen. Right? Now groups 3 and to 12 transition elements or metals. Okay. Silicon and germanium or germanium are examples of we just saw it SI and GE are examples of metalloids. Okay. Alkali metals, these are Group one elements, the elements that are in group one. Halogens, the elements that are in group seventeen. Okay, so that's the end of the lesson, guys. Hi, this lesson is a lot of memorization. Okay, so you need to uh, memorize some things to, and try to remember. Don't forget the grammar of the lesson. Just know where the elements are, metals, non-metals, and so on. Uh, so we learned. The contributions of different scientists, okay, and we identified some of the key features in the periodic table: groups, names of groups, metalloids, metals, بعض الخصائص, and some of the properties. All right. That's the end of our lesson, guys. I hope uh, that this video was beneficial to you. If you have any questions or comments, please use the comments section, or you can contact me. Again, please try to share uh, the channel and subscribe so that students can hopefully benefit from it. Uh, thank you very much and see you in the next video, inshallah. Take care.